An entrepreneurial journey like no other. Self-made, hardworking, educated, personable, and informed. Invest in his staff, believes in personal development, and giving back to others. In today's episode of The Print Pod, we speak to Douglas Gibson, CEO and founder of Infigo. So let's jump right in. In today's episode, Web to Win, The Journey So Far. Douglas, thank you for coming into what was your office. My pleasure. <laughs> now the print pod. Um, I guess we'll come on to that later, why we were kicked out and yeah, decided to, to do that. Let's start with some true or false facts first okay. of all. Right. Hit me. True or false, you were born in Falkirk. Um, I was Falkirk Royal Infirmary. Wow. Okay. Or as we say in Scotland, Falkirk. <laughs> okay. So that makes you Scottish? It's part. Okay, good. You used to sell bikes. I used to build and sell bikes, yeah. Okay. You want to give any more information on that? No, yeah, well, growing up, um, want to earn some money. Um, love tinkering with things. Um, I actually started off by um, making um, forever friends, cutting them out of pallets yeah. and selling them to people. And I got bored of that, surprise, surprise. And then I started getting tinkering with bikes. Love bikes, love cycling. Couldn't afford a bike at the time, so I thought, <laughs> let's go and build one. What age was that? That would have been seven. Wow, entrepreneurial at seven. Yeah, well, believe it or not, full disclosure, <laughs> my father gave me a, 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 a jigsaw yeah. and not a, a 50-piece one, a, a, an electrical jigsaw. Power tool. At, power tool yeah. at five or six years old. So I learned to, to use that five or six years. Have old. all fingers, uh, <laughs> extremities. <laughs> we're, we're full here. Other parts of me, but yeah, my hands and fingers are intact. Okay. Was Infigo your, true or false, Infigo was your first role in the tech space? Uh, pfft, no, false. Yeah, it has to be. True or false, you're a qualified Microsoft engineer, MCSE. Well, full disclosure, I was. Okay. That has lapsed, but yeah, I did train in the world of Microsoft technology. Um, and also I qualified as an electromechanical engineer as well. Yeah. So not just in the tech space, but also the hardware engineering. You heard it here first. <laughs> Which is <laughs> one of my true true loves and how my brain operates is okay. very much on the engineering. I think we'll simple, come on to that a bit later on. Piece. Very, very interesting. So talk, so you've been entrepreneurial, you've been cutting up pallets with power tools, building bikes, selling bikes. You went to school? Yeah, hated school. No, I love school. <laughs> I enjoyed, enjoyed the meeting um, of people. I enjoyed integrating. Probably I left Scotland when I was 12. Mm-hmm. Um, I went, or my th- I actually turned 13, I think, the next day. And which I went to your local pub, yeah, and had and had a, my <laughs> birthday meal with my mum and my dad, yeah, um, and yeah, school was an interesting place in Scotland. It was a bit different. Um, it was very very focused on sport and and things like that. And then um, coming into England, that was interesting um, because you move into a different way of teaching. It was much more, I, I would say, Scottish at the time was much more higher educational and no disrespect to the English education. Yeah. And then, but it was very different coming into, it was less focused on sport and, and the English piece, but I actually ended up playing more sport, sport um, than Thomas Bennett in, 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 in Crawley. Okay. Um, but I, I very quickly just loved being around and being with people and, that sort of stuff and very quickly got involved in other things like the theatre studies and, oh, really? and stuff. My passion is always to talk and speak out. and I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so from school? Yeah. Talk, talk me through what happened next. Um, well, I think, I think one of the things I started doing in school was working with the teachers, organising things, getting things set up <laughs> and getting events. And so I think there's always been that natural tendency to to organize and, mm. and, and move things forward. Um, I remember, how old have I been? 15. Mum bought me my first computer. 
Um, absolutely, absolutely hated it. Really weird. To, couldn't get it. And then I sort of worked out. I could tinker and do things with it. So I started building websites. Um, then, um, what was the, I can't remember the name of the program, but it was, it was a, a tool that allowed you to create flash websites. Okay. Um, Dreamweaver? And no, uh, it was, before then. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit before I, I actually moved into Dreamweaver. So I got into building websites and then randomly, and this is no intention, but probably falls into Infigo was I created a, a website and called My Poker Cards. Um, which was creating a personalized version of poker cards. And at that point, it wasn't wasn't in my personalization journey, should we call it. But right, so right. there was obviously an interest very early on um, from that perspective. Then I created a couple of websites selling um, old school Microsoft, Microsoft, Nokia and tunes. Okay. So I could work out that you could create these mobile yeah. phone tunes yeah. and sell them. Um, and then... I headed into secondary um, doing maths, physics, business studies, and theater studies. Wow. So four A levels of which I think I lasted about a few weeks. <laughs> um, unbeknown to my mother, um, I carried on going to, to school, which I left and, and left and went to join a company called Binny Black & Veatch, which I started in my engineering um ways and started in yeah went went there i'm sorry no i didn't go to Benny black and feast and i went to um elector which was ex phillips medical systems yeah and i did an apprenticeship because i knew that if i if i left school and didn't get a job my mother would absolutely kill me <laughs> so i joined phillips medical which became elector and I was a trainee engineer. And at that point, they were making medical systems. Mm. Um, but I got to play with circuit boards, make do soldering, all of that sort of stuff. Very hands-on. Mm. Um, and then I did that for a while, got a little bit bored. Then I went to Binny, didn't tell my mum once again, <laughs> left the company, <laughs> um, went to Binny Black and Veatch over in Red Hill. That was just a great company, um, but the most boring job any human I plotted points so we had all these paper maps of all of all pipes that exist in the world and in cases in, in the UK predominantly but in the world as well um, in cases an emergency a war or something so we have emergency pipes dotted around our secret but these existed on a map in paper form so right. I click the points of where these were and after about three days and about 80 pool matches, I used to love playing pool and still do. I used to go off and just play pool for the rest of the day and I get told off. So I just left um, and then fell in selling fax machines at Xerox, which was exclusive. Okay. So that was the, the that was my wow. journey into, into print. And I remember meeting two very interesting individuals still who took, made a big impact on my life. Um, Joe Gallagher, um, Phil Tucker um, and they sort of escorted me for the next few years um, and I remember Phil I think it was saying can you sell me a piece of wood um, and that was my if I could sell him a piece of wood I'd get a get him a job I'd get a job as a I can't even remember yeah fax salesman I think it was something like that so exclusive solutions limited yeah let's start there then so we've got Phil mm -hmm. Tucker and Joe um, we work with Joe now and Figo with yeah, a lot of his programs things, and things yeah. MC. Um, so you started off with a fax machine. Yeah. So it was a, it was an interesting, um, and I guess it sort of sums up my brain a little bit, moves around, shall we say. Um, so started selling fax machines. I then worked out that I was paying somebody to install the fax machine. So I said to Joe and Phil, could I install the fax machines and take some of the money from the installers and stuff like that. So we did, I've, I've sold them, we installed them. Um, and at, at that sort of time was quite an interesting time in the printing world, because that's when the, the first sort of um, photocopiers were becoming digitized. So okay. we were taking them then from old fashioned photocopies and they were going to be the first sort of digital printers, the Xerox were bringing them out and, and things like that. So I got, 
I sort of using my technical skills, got I dived into a little bit of the technical. So I moved more from a sales into a technical, still did a bit of tele sales and um, God, we used to bash the phone, hundreds of calls, 150 calls a day. Um, we used this crazy database system. Guy who created it was called Jason Summer Data, I think it was. <laughs> what God, a name. Knows, God knows where he is now, but he was quite a character. Lived down in Brighton, very bohemian, um, but quite an interest. And we had this database, so I ended up picking up managing this database as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as well as selling fax machines, we sold secondhand printing. Pretty much anything that we bought back in, we, I could sell it back out. Um, but still very much on the techie side and a real mix. I think that's been my career on commercial, technical, commercial, technical, commercial, etc. Um, and more unique than just being a, an out and out salesperson yeah. or an out and out techie. Um, so yeah, that 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 we moved into with an exclusive. I brought them in a product called OnBase, um, which was a document management system from the US. So I brought that from the US to yeah. exclusive, and we sold um, one of our first document management systems to a company called Freight Transport Association, and they used to be in. Um, in Tunbridge Wells and that was quite interesting so I brought in that as my first sort of software sort of focus yeah. of bringing that in um, so I then become like the IT manager for for um, for exclusive is that where the MCSE bit comes in yeah I guess so I've no idea why that why I did that. <laughs> it just turned up one day and yeah I think I was probably a good friend who funny enough were next door and his so Nadim, a good friend of mine, runs a, a, a computing company and all of that sort of... So that mix of friends um, were very interesting computers and they were sort of like, get yourself a few qualifications. Yeah. But I never pursued that. And a few people did and, and, have, and do have very good livings from it. But um, I chose to continue to push into, into the more sales, photocopy, hardware um, side. And then I got headhunted by... Um, EFI. Okay, um, just before we go into EFI then, yeah. so just take us back to exclusives. What sort of year were we talking? What sort of period? God, no, no, yeah. Because I have this this vision uh, mm -hmm. of that time and I might be wrong and I, and I just think of uh, Wolf of Wall Street with everyone mm. on the phones and... Oh, and no, it was 100%. And yeah, yeah, no, we, 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 it, was, it was exactly that. It was... Um, it was... Copier, copier jocks. We yeah. had black shoes, white socks, yeah. um, fast cars, yeah. um, Astra GTs, or whatever it was. <laughs> the, we all wore we all wore shit ties and um, and horrible suits. And, yeah. Um, some people got up to worse things than others before the beatings. <laughs> but no, it was though those were the heydays of selling because you were making twenties or thousands of pounds selling photo photocopies. Yeah. Yeah. When and it was almost made up money then um, back then you could make more money in a in a month than most people at that sort of time were making in a year. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. but th those times were, weren't around for forever. But no, it was it was it was mad. But it was you you were printing out you'd be on the phone selling and it was if you imagine that scene in Wolf of Wall Street where everybody's round that's what we used to do. Yeah, we'd be on the on the phones we'd sell we'd all high five we get. We'd have, we'd all we'd have phone days, all of that sort of stuff. So that that gave me a lot of knowledge that fits into the business today, yeah. which is activity, um, all of that sort of stuff. So in those days, we'd type our own letters, we'd print them out, we'd f we'd put them through a a, a, a posting machine, yeah. we'd frank machine, frank, frank yeah. machine. Yeah. we'd frank them, we'd send Fags them out. out the yeah, 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 that, yeah try, that was it. I think we even painted the office yellow at one point. <laughs> just for shits and giggles, but um, no, that 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 was, and it was quite an interest because it was quite it was quite um, a fun, quite a fun period, mm. um, and it was a point where people weren't completely sick of cold calls and, mm. and things like that. But no, it was very fun. There was a lot of skills personally I learned, um, personal skills, but also about business, about the activity, Phil and Joe. Great. It was a really interesting. First time I saw two very dynamic managers. Um, Phil was out there hard nose selling, hard nose selling. Joe was out there managing the team, building the team, 
And to see that dynamic was really mm. interesting because mm-hmm. normally in business, you've got one leader that's out there, really ball busty, busting everybody's balls. You don't get that combination. I was thinking, I, and I learned a lot from that. And you'll see some of that reflection in what exists in Amfigo today um, from, from, from that perspective. So no, there was jokes aside, <laughs> there, there really was that sort of out there selling and, and I'm sure some of the what they, they class themselves as zeroids that were actually working alongside us. These guys were just doing crazy deals, earning crazy money. Okay. But it was a, a fun fun time. But also one of the things, the big grounding, was we we had a lot of training. Xerox really um, put the emphasis on training. So we were going weeks and weeks. We'd go to a place called Wokefield Park, um, which was a, a, a vocational training place. I just go there. It would be great. I'd put up in a hotel. We all used to get smashed, get lost in fields, um, <laughs> miss the start of the next day. There was all sorts of shenanigans. That Did probably, you learn anything? I learned lots. Yeah, about <laughs> shots. But, uh, it was no. It was, it was one of the best training, and that, that's one of the things that I filter into in Figo now training. Yeah and development and things like that. So you start to look at back at all of these weird and wonderful and um, different things and you can start to see what the foundations of what's driving out and figure of some of the things it is it is today. That's good to know. Interesting. Um if I then came knocking. Yeah, so so we started obviously um being reasonably mm-hmm. successful. We got headhunter approach me um, and I could only be, let me just try to think, 19, 20, something like that. Um, so still fairly green around the gills about some of this sort of stuff. Mm. Um, approach me, much bigger numbers, much bigger opportunity, and you get quite attracted and excited. And mm. I met uh, at that stage, I remember meeting another uh, very interesting chap who I still talk to now. We call him Dad, Terry Garvey. Um, the heads up EFI, one of the nicest fellas you'll ever meet in your life. And I remember meeting with him and chatting. And so my job there, I can't remember, it was like technicals operations guy. So I'd be managing Xerox account, but heading up all the technical operations. Um, so making sure demonstrations and machines, all of that sort of stuff. And at that point, EFI were really low in their sales volume compared to some of the other RIPs. Um, of that that sat on the front of the printing. So we managed to really turn that around, which was quite quite interesting. But yeah, that, that took me to places in South Africa. My first, I think my first ever visit was, Doug, go and look after these and guys out in South, South Africa. They were the top spenders. Wow. Um, and we went out there, I went out to Sun City and as a very young lad, that, that was mind blowing. There was, there was, interesting stories and, and things. But that was, once again, it was, I had no experience of this. I was sent out there mm. to look after some of the best talent. Mm. Um, we did that. There was a few shenanigans, but we managed to make it home. Nobody got ate by alligators. There was alligators on the, we played golf on the golf course. It was wow. just before, I think they were playing one of the PGA Opens or wow. something at the main golf course here. So the golf course was an impeccable. Uh, but once again, that was a, there was a lot of culture learning there about what went on in South Africa. We we had some buddies that um, caddies that went round with us and learned from them and listened to them. And so there's been I've been very very fortunate along the way to learn from great people and and great circumstances and um, really helped me evolve and build what is in Figo today. And I think <clears throat> one of the interesting points on that that journey has just been. You are let loose, but you're let loose with the budget. You have to have, you start to learn the respect of money mm. and, and at those were big budgets. Mm. Um, but you couldn't just spend it willy nilly. You had to come back with a justification. And that was the really interesting thing. And that led on to then going out and spending a lot of time in the US working with um, EFI and EFI Connect and, and other things and create, started to create my love for the US and. I could see a very different game that existed um, in, in, in the UK. And I think once again, over half of Infigo's business, if not more, is, is now it's in more. US based. Yeah, it's more now, yeah. Um, from, that, from, from that perspective. So amazing grounding, learning to deal with bigger, high-end budgets, 
working for a very, very large corporate. But even in those days and some of the conversations, I wasn't meant for that for that world. I'd get on and do my... T- I've never been a very good corporate person, either in school or... Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> I, push against, I push against the um, hierarchy okay. and I've always done that. I don't like... To, I've never really liked being told what to do mm. um, and not necessarily in an arrogant way but maybe it is I don't know um, pushing against the start back against the establishment a little bit um, so that's 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 quite interesting so I was out in the in in the US with EFI and yeah we were having some fun and a few beers and probably a few more beers too many and <laughs> the guys are like well, why do these guys just tell us what to do all the time and so I started having those conversations with senior people. I thought, well, one of them was the main owner of the business. And okay. Turns out you shouldn't have those conversations <laughs> with those sorts of guys. So <laughs> the recommendation from a few people was maybe this is time to go and right. do your own thing. Right. Um, so after sitting in a few sales meetings, just bored, thinking I'm hitting numbers, but all they want me to do is type things into the Salesforce database. I'm not, I'm not a guy that types things in databases. Mm. Um, so I started thinking, what's next? And at that point, we were using a couple of software platforms um, that were getting it quite interest me. But the model of, of that, of how we sold them, I couldn't work out. So we'd sell these bits of software. It cost huge amounts of money. It would take a long time to to install and at that point nobody's really getting any benefit and I thought there must be using the old engineer's brain there must be an easier faster better way of doing this um, and I, I sort of had some time out and went back to exclusive but at that point they were just being bought out um, by an, a South African company called Bytes Technology Group um, or Bytes Document Solutions I think it was a UK yes. but Bikes Technology Group owned them in South Africa, okay. which was owned by Altran, billion dollar um, business. And I spent a few months in there just bored to tears. I was given a lot of money to head up their software. I can't remember what it was. It must have been software division. Um, Phil was still at the helm. Joe was, I think, moving out. Um, and yeah, it was just... I remember, I think I went out to play golf every day. I think I played golf nearly every day because I just I thought I can't be bothered doing with this. And then that gave me time to think about the opportunity. And that's where we 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 started the the helms of Enfigo mm-hmm. in that in that business. And Phil was very supportive about right if you believe in this idea and and that's really where Enfigo started. Was it was in those in those worlds, and we started to get a bit of traction. Um, their idea then was to bundle it with the machines, but that really wasn't the right thing to do because you've got to people have got to take the value, and I, I didn't want to just bundle it and sell lots. I wanted coming having come from where we sold lots of software and nobody used it. I was I was really passionate about that if people are buying it and people are investing and paying money, that they've got to use it and get the value out of the out of the product and I was starting to work out how we can do that and that's where really we were, the, the early days cloud computing was starting to kick off but it wasn't really mm-hmm. there but we actually we, we formed um, this early product that became in Vigo and that was written on .NET technology then it was .NET Nuke which was just another framework I went and found that because I could, it was a quicker way to get to market and we built some tools. Um, and that's where Infigo, um, the, the brand started within that environment. And then it started to gather, gather traction, got bigger, and then mm-hmm. we started to get more funding. Um, and then I didn't really like the, keeping it politically correct, I didn't <laughs> like the direction Um that we that we were going. So I sort of said to the guys, "Look, we've started this. It's not for me. The direction. Once again, I was getting told what to do and sort of pushing back against that because my vision was quite clear. And my vi- one thing throughout my life, I've always had a clear vision of what I wanted to do, whether it was selling cuddly toys, cuddly <laughs> cuddly wooden bears, or building my own 
bicycles or that sort of stuff. I've always, had, and even as a kid, I know I knew what I wanted to do. Like bizarrely, I've always had quite a quick, uh, and I still do to this. My my life, getting married, all that sort of stuff. I've always had quite a clear vision on that sort of stuff, and it didn't quite fit. So I suggested that I left and. At the time, it was like, well, you built this. You can't just leave. Who's going to take over? And I offered to help train other people up. And that sort of gave some traction. Then they were like, well, why don't you buy this? The whole thing. Or maybe I offered to buy I can't remember. So that was their, that was their traction um, of me starting to move off and set up. That's what became Infigo Software Limited on April 22nd, 2010. Um, we set the company up and I started to transition. And unfortunately that didn't go to, it wasn't the easiest journey, shall we say, mm-hmm. of, of moving out and transitioning. Um, and it wasn't made easier by the people around me at that point. And they were, they were people that I learned that not the best of people. Okay. And certainly not like your Terry Garvey's and your Phil's and your Joe's that were, that had a good interest in you as a human. These other guys were just out for profit and success. And that's played out quite true um, in, 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 in recent events in recent times. So that's quite funny, but they, it wasn't made very nice. And that really upset me. And I, I had to take a bit of a time out um, at that time, just to, to regard my thoughts, because I invested a lot of time and energy to take this company away. And that was taken away from me. So. But I knew it was my destiny to run with it. So I regrouped, dug back in, did a slightly different deal, um, but knew that I was never going to build an empire for somebody else. So I'd done that for years. Why not? Why not do that? So we started building um, a product with a terrible name, um, <laughs> which is, um, the Americans love called Catfish. Um, and this was going to be in Figo version two. Um, and Figo stayed within Bytes and I helped them develop it. I went over to South Africa, spent another couple of months out there helping those guys. But they, it was my baby and they really didn't know what to do with it. And that just died. Um, I don't know where it is. In Figo V1, got some lovely screenshots of it. Um, <laughs> it, it exists somewhere and there's some customers. So. That that disappeared and, and we were like, well, I'm not building on top of that. We, so we created this new product from scratch. And actually that I think has been our defining moment where a lot of the web to print solutions came from tens of years ago. At that point, it would have been 13, 14, maybe it would have been 2013. We decided to create this new version in .NET and that gave us and one of our first few customers was a couple of real big blue chips. I won't name them on here, but, and one of them is still with us today. Mm-hmm. Um, if you ever cold at night, you'll, you'll get warm by these guys. I think we can guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so we built Infigo from day one mm-hmm. for two, enter- two enterprise customers. One was a huge retailer. Mm-hmm. Um, one was a huge um, utilities business. So we started in a different space than most of the other web to prints at that sort of time. The web to prints were um, business card systems, mm. That's what, and a lot of them still are. Mm. So yeah, that was the that was the exit out, and and then into what became and what started off in Figo. Allow us to interrupt this broadcast with a short ad break. Are you ready to take advantage of the next printing revolution? Access our white paper to find out how web to print has revolutionized the printing industry. Inside, we discuss the growing importance of print e-commerce and automation, whereby customers are increasingly seeking an Amazon-like experience, with businesses that can't provide this being left behind. So how do you take this one step further and put your customers in control? Access the white paper and find out how web to print is revolutionizing the printing industry. How customers can find your business online. How you can learn from Amazon's huge success. How to enable your print business to make money while you sleep. The way in which potential customers want to deal with your business has changed. Are you adapting to grow? 
Download it now at vigo.net forward slash white papers. When you um, made the exit, made the decision to move, mm. how was the market looking and how was it embracing web to print or was it embracing web to print? Um, Did you well, I think at that point, my exposure and selling was really in the UK. Well, and South Africa, actually. Um, it was, and I think it's always been, the print always amazes me. Um, and you'll see it now still is they've always been, there's a lot of talk about software, but the, 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 there is a real lack of investment and knowledge about what makes um, print businesses really good. And if you look at the super successful ones that are out there today, a lot of them are built on very, very good software systems mm. like your, your Vista prints, your Gelatos, all of that mm. sort of stuff. They come from a software first mindset. And always I think, and the challenge has always been is that these guys will spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions on print devices, um, but then the budget for software is always quite low. Okay. Um, so I think that's that's been a bit of a, a weird love to try and help prove and, and drive the value that software is as equal, if not mm. more, that you can't have hardware without software and vice versa. And, and we've definitely seen that, gr the transition. So back then it was just very much standalone systems, one-off projects and stuff like that, where the, the ecosystem now for printing companies is very much mm. software driven. So they've got MIS systems, mm. they've got workflow mm. systems, they've got tooling that integrates into the ERPs and their accounting system. So the transition has been very off, very art, um, antiquated solutions to much more sophisticated solutions that they, that they see today. And I think that's something that Figure have done better than any of the other web to print players is, is we've managed to become a very, very good, sophisticated system for our customers um, on many levels um, from, from, from that perspective. Do you see better adoption in America? This um, I, th I think uh, better adoption, I think they've always, they've been early adopters of some of this technology. So whereas the UK, they're still on maybe the first or second system, in the US, they're probably on the second, third, fourth, or yeah. the bigger companies. So they're invested in their own technology, which creates their own challenges. Um, so I think the markets are, we, we for, for whatever reason, maybe it is because our solution is better fitted for slightly larger printing companies as it stands today. Um, we, we've found that those larger budgets and those fits and those medium to enterprise customers absolutely embrace Infigo as a product and kick out a plethora of other competitive products. Mm -hmm. So we definitely, um, we've got a big stranglehold in, in the UK and grow, a growing one in Europe, but um, for whatever reason, maybe it's the previous past I've had with the links with the US and whatever, but yeah, we, we definitely... And our pipeline now is probably 70, 80% of, yes. of, of US, mm. um, which is exciting. Um, but saying that, we work with some brilliant companies in the UK and will continue to develop and, and grow our presence in the UK as we, as we move forward. Has the industry gone in the direction that you expected all those years ago? Um, is, yeah, I, guess, I guess what's quite interesting is I was at the very sort of entry of this digital world. So back then it was all Lytho. So one of my first jobs um, when I was exclusive was matching, creating press match profiles. So we'd have these very very poor, <laughs> at those times digital, but quite advanced at the time. Mm. And we would create these press profiles to match the Lytho. So it was a lot of Lytho. Whereas I think that the, the switch has been very much the dominance of um, but it, what we're talking there, and that's probably 20 odd years ago, um, was that just, the world would be digital. And I think what's been quite interesting is there's still a big market for both digital and litho across okay. both commercial print within the um, labels and packaging space and stuff like that. No doubt, as we evolve forward and these digital manufacturers like HP, etc., 
create faster and better machines, they're going to eat into that that market. I think so. That's quite interesting. But I think from a software perspective, um, I didn't think it would take so long for these products to become so integrated. Um, and that uh, that always amazes me because I think that's the first thing that we need to do. But there's no point in having five different systems that don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And still now, we're having conversations with the most automated business and they've still got very manual processes. Right. And my love and my passion is how can we eradicate that? Mm. Whether that's been one of the things that we've done in the last few years is, is deeper integrations into ERP, MIS systems. Mm. And the reason we've done that is the only way to make these systems truly automated is by bringing that bringing that closer and closer together. So would you say that's something you want to see improved by the industry in the next 10 years, more adoption of? Yeah, yeah I, th I think 100%. I think there's always been, and one of the big fears has always been in print, is that everybody's fearful of each other. So what that stops, and that, that doesn't really tend to happen in some other th um, worlds. And I found by some of the things that I've done later on in the last few years with software, is we share everything. We want to learn and we want to, stop each other whereas print has been quite insular they don't there's a belief that we've got the secret source that i don't want to share we joined um the dscoop community and i think it was 2015 mm -hmm. and that blew my mind for this openness of, and willingness to to share and i was like no this is an this is a fit for Infigo. Mm. And, and we work closely with that because um we've got to talk about it we've got to share but the only way we can do that is share our successes and our failures and i'm still amazed that yeah it's and i think there's a number there's another five or ten years and there's a number of platforms in the marketplace today and um, the guys at four p's are looking at one um zake as i think zakio i've yep. tried yep. um jdf i was i used to sit on the working with efi and the sip4 and the jdf mm. and mm. we've we've talked about it but it's still a hard nut to crack and that amazes me. <clears throat> okay. um, but I think we've definitely seen big glimmers in the last um, few, probably months still, but in the last probably one to two years and and that becomes a reality. And I think as that becomes a reality, it allows these smaller guys to really compete with the much bigger companies right. because all of a sudden, like the, the benefits of your Vistaprints, et cetera, and Moves and those guys is they've, investing millions and millions of pounds in tech and what we bring to the party and what the passion of why we're doing this and one from day one was how can we do this faster and cheaper and easier mm -hmm. and better and that's really becoming a reality now okay that's interesting as well and you mentioned as well that you you like to the understanding of the whole business and you go in with that kind of um yeah kind of pains you a little bit that things aren't joined up when they invest all the yeah, yeah i think one of our yeah so, so i've offered a number of companies slightly outside of figure but obviously intrinsically linked is um doing workflow audit so and i like to look at the business completely um without software in mind just looking at them how orders come in mm. how the business operates obviously running my own business have a good commercial understanding mm. And it's quite amazing on on just how um, th these businesses are run and there's certain people still. And I think some of the challenges that we have today in there's there's a lot of um, printing companies with MDs, et cetera, that, that still hold a lot of the, 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 the process. And they've got to be able to be comfortable to letting that free, whether it be the production manager. So you'll still see... And a lot of these businesses very pivotal people, which obviously makes sense. Mm -hmm. But for true automation to truly work, then there's got to be a freedom of of things moving through 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 the business. You feel quite strongly about that consultative approach, don't you? Because I think oh yeah, I think it's the, it's the only way. And uh, I say to all businesses that we work with today and, and in the future and in the past, and like if we can't ha help add value to your business. Um, we don't just want to sell software. That that the software piece should come naturally. Yeah. If we can help fix problems, if we can help take away pain, if we can help add value, um, I know we do better that better than anybody in the planet. And and the reason I know that is because we de demonstrated it and our customers tell that. And I've always looked. I think people have always focused too much on the product, 
And product is only a small part of what Infigo is about. Mm. Is our experience, our people, that characterizes because you can have the best products in the marketplace. Look at your Lotus Notes, look at your Quarks. Yeah. Those products were brilliant, but where are they now? Mm. They didn't develop. They, they need people that can take them, adopt them. And, yeah. and I think that's one thing that Infigo is, is mm. we, 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 we've created this onboarding system, this adoption piece, and we allow it to get integrated into the businesses very, very quickly and, and much better than others. So um, Infigo is much more than just a software product. It really is embodied by the the, the people that exist and, and wrapped around it. McGregor on recently, and he mm. was he was sharing that one of his customers is making profit on a fifty dollar job. Yeah, and that, and that and that's why we exist. That any job that goes through the business, you should be able to take money. Otherwise, you shouldn't be moving the mm. job through your business. And yeah. I think that's a big mindset yeah. change. Yeah, and it's slowly changing in your view. Just a bit too slow, would you say? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, I think that yeah, the speed is mental. Like uh, we 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 are we are far slowly becoming one of the the quite dominant players in this space. And I would have thought, and, and we, we we've not gone out and got tons of money. We've not gone and raised lots of money. We are very much the way that Figa has been has been built out is is bootstrap so that time takes longer yeah and the risk with that is people will come out fire lots of money come into the marketplace gobble up the market and that hasn't happened and i think the reason is that is because it's not just product it is more than just product from from, from that perspective okay um you've always worked extremely hard in my opinion mm-hmm. Also played extremely hard as yeah. well, but I've also <laughs> seen the playing be part of the working, and yeah, you know yeah. we go into it. Um, have to be extremely driven and motivated to create a business like this from the ground upwards. Mm. Does that come from your professional journey or your personal journey? I, do you know, so as Vigo started to evolve in the last few years, that allowed me time to take a bit more of a step back and 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 and, and start to undersell the personal drive. I think. There's many, many different ways. I was brought up. Um, my, my dad had many businesses, and they they, they failed for, for a number of reasons. And dad passed away at an early time in my life, which was very very hard. Um, and I think that 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 work ethic it came from the fa- is a family thing. I mm-hmm. don't I don't think the work ethic can be built in. I think like yourself, Chris, and like Greg and. And Alex and others in this business is you, you can see the people that are driven. Mm. And what drives us, probably a bit of pain, probably a bit of hurt. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Where you've got to, to, to want to... And Figo has been, been uh, an absolute um, amazing, amazing journey. Mm. But it's also been hugely painful in terms of mentally and mm. stress and financially. I used to be a very wealthy person and will be again. Um, but... I think you've got to you've got to be you've got to be um, driven from from day one and and be able to push that pain where you go from right can we make payroll can we do this and Jesus Christ we made payroll but we've got to get up and do it again in the early days um, but once you've got like we have these days a nice steady income you start to think well what what is the motivation and for me still it's the motivation of helping and driving value to others and yeah. I think that's the bit that will. Will, will see me and I think what what really drives me is one of the biggest things that I've seen in the last 14 years with Infigo is seeing people develop around me that maybe started lack of knowledge lack of skills and we've been able to work closely with them we've, we've seen people with no kids one kid two kids <laughs> um, I've had three three children twins and, a, and my daughter um, who I'm very very proud of um, come up through the I think that's an interesting thing we had twins um, we had Bonnie um, that would have been in 2013 so it was a few years after all kicking off um, sorry yeah 20 Bonnie God I we'll remember right. that yeah. anyway around that sort of time and the boys came a few years after but it was a big change when the twins when the twins and I noticed a le- level of energy that I had to regain and because it took a lot away mm. and I think in Figo if we didn't, didn't have the twins and Figo would be a very much bigger business today mm. a very different business and I think having the twins 
grounded me a little bit at a, t- a time where maybe we would have absolutely gone off and um in a, in a different tangent so that's been quite nice but I think the, the bit that motivates me and why I'm sitting here and everybody says oh it must be time to sell up and and run away Doug. I think the reality is is we create an environment where our customers are thriving and the people that work for us are thriving mm-hmm. and we don't get it right all the time sometimes we have happy employees and sometimes we're happy happy customers <laughs> and sometimes the customers hate us and people hate to work here and that's the reality of life of business but mm. that's the bit that really drives me there's a lot of um stuff from the past there's a lot of stuff that have been 100 driven from my father and and how he was as an individual um but but now i i, I get a kick out of seeing the team and the team around me and certainly what I look at some of the things we we joined Vistage, a business networking um, club. I've joined SAS Academy, and I want to learn. I, I have a passion for reading and learning everything as much as around it. I don't know. I haven't got all the answers, and I've never had all the answers. And working with great people, learning from great surroundings, and things like that has allowed me to shape both running. And I've never wanted to run with my engineering business a a a business i wanted to run a great business mm. i wanted to run a business that works well i wanted to, to run a business that people want to turn up to um and stuff like that and you can't do that yourself because some of the worst businesses but maybe the bigger businesses um are, are very low level hierarchy people don't know where they are and i think one of the things that we tried to do with infigo and one of the reasons we joined vistage was to get a better people management. I've never been that great with with managing people. Right. I'm not that organized. So um, we bought your business. Um, I can't remember when that was. 2016. 2016, 2017. Yeah. That was really pivotal because we didn't just buy into your knowledge and, and the customer base. We we had you, um, obviously Julie joined mm. as well. So mm. we got Hector. Had, and Hector and mm. some Pablo. great... Yeah, Pablo. So <laughs> we brought some great people, and I think that that's the, that's the thing that allowed us to once again continue to develop and, and mm. stuff like that. So the Vistage has allowed us to put a very people orientated focus where a lot of businesses don't have that. Mm. It is profit at all costs, and I would rather have a well run business that makes a good amount of money than a really profitable business that people hate being part of. And I know I get questions, certainly my business peers, a lot about that. Um, and there's always a great discussion over over a couple of couple of beers. And also on that on that subject, so you said you feel very passionate about getting into new networks, um, immersing yourself in other businesses, getting experience. You push mm. that down to the leadership team as well. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. I, 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 my, my next challenge for me and the team and. Um, we, we I just handed a day-to-day running um, um, over to, to Alex. We've seen Alex joined us from from a large business. Um, he's been with us, what, eight to 10 years now, or probably 10 years, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and we've seen um, himself develop. Um, but also, it's, I want to, I've seen the benefit of self-development, both physically, mentally, mm professionally Imagine. spiritually all of that sort of stuff and you have to you have to be willing to go and learn that and people can exist or people can exist and learn mm-hmm. and i think too much of the population doesn't exist and evolve and we just exist every day mm-hmm. and we've got to continue to develop ourselves the books we read the people we hang around with um i've taken 24 was a very personal thing for me to get fitter. Um, I went through some trials and tribulations with my health and quite serious th- implications that unable to walk and, and really bad. Mm-hmm. And that was all stress, 100%. The doctors couldn't give me any reason. They gave me a ton of tablets and I 100% put down the stress mm-hmm. that Infigo had put on me um, both personally and professionally. But thankfully I was able to push through and and all of those things. And so I want to see, that's a big thing for me as our senior leadership team take where they are today. And, and any, not just as SLT, but all of the business to say yeah, yeah. that they've taken themselves and look back in a year or five years time and say, this is where we were. These are the things that we mm. uh, 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 have done. 
and, and from that we're better humans and that just doesn't mean yourselves but the impact you have on those around you as well and that led on to um the four day week um scenario because we do spend a lot of time in the office at work and and stuff like that and it shouldn't be the making of us and mm. i think sadly too much of society is driven um by work 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 but the reality is you just become counterproductive mm. and what really hit hit it on the nail was actually a vistage event and there was a chap there talking about um and i can't remember the stats verbatim but it was it was a very low percentage of people um like sub 50 percent that were fully operating at a high level really it was mental and so I started to working out, right, well, if we only worked 80% of that time or covered that hours or mm. the individual, the, excuse me, um, then why have we got people here 100% mm. of the time? Mm. And when we started to do the mass, I sat down yourself and a few of the others in the business, mm. I said, we started to share this thought. Everybody looked at me like I'd just come from Mars, um, bit of excitement, but trepidation. What, how does it work? What does the staff mean? What's the customer's going to think and all of that sort of stuff. And I think we've been doing it a year and a half now and the business has gone strength for strength. I think people are happier, people exist. It's been good for hiring. It's been good for, for stress management. We've been good for... Everything, really. Yeah, for yeah. keeping hold of um, staff and things like that. Um, and But yeah, it's taken, it's taken a while to get used to, but it was really important to do that and as the next stage because, as I, as I said a couple of times... Um, over the last sort of um, hour is it's important to me to run not just a business but a really good business that was mm. built on fundamentals and the next part of that journey so I think once we'd nailed the 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 four day week was really well actually in my engineering brain it is, is what framework could we operate better in a process and an organisation and that when having been part of the SAS Academy and the work they did leaning out to the super successful businesses there, we stumbled upon a couple of business frameworks. Um, but the one that I really liked was um, EOS, the Enterprise Operating System. And I sort of came back and shared that with Alex and, and Julie and yourself and mm. Greg and a few mm. others. And, and, and we started on the journey um, just under a year ago on what does that mean and what does the impact and we fully kicked that off in May so we're what three three months in three months yeah, in yeah, and yeah. I think we'll all agree yourself included that allowed us to to adjust the organization a little make sure that people have clear reporting clear information and I think from where we set out to be a better run business is not perfect yet but we will we will have a business that is better run Fantastic. And, and allow us to set us up for the next part of the journey, mm. which is growth and scale into new markets, new opportunities. And because there's no point, and I've seen it time after time, is you see businesses grow very quickly, mm. but are very poorly run. Mm. So we've been, I would say, reasonably um, steady and, 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 and controlled in our growth. But now we have all the fundamentals and the pillars mm. to continue to to accelerate that growth and into the next part of our of our journey. You said twenty sixteen was a pivotal year, <clears throat> and and looking back at some of my notes here, mm. you mentioned obviously the acquisition of, of NetCandy. Um, you became an official HP SmartStream partner. Mm -hmm. You also set up a business or an arm of Figo in Moldova. Yeah. Um, why? Well, I think like, so. Once again, and it features probably if you look at some of their talk track is, is if, if we if I couldn't find the talent and I couldn't find the process that worked for Infigo, and I didn't. We tried a couple of times. In fact, I was actually sued, and they tried to take me to to the high court, of which we quashed it and and won and got some 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 um, compensation from a company that were claiming to do lots of work for us and, and just didn't. Um, so we just had this, We I knew we had a requirement to build technology very well and at a high level and very fortunate. Um, our CTO, um, Michael Zorner, based in Germany, Germany engineering under the hood, 
right from the get go. Um, he's like, well, we've got to do this well, Douglas. We can't just bring ad hoc people. So we created this um, test and this this idea and said, right, we'll push it out into the freelance network and see what. So we used a couple of the freelance um, environments, Upwork, I think, was one of them, um, and we found we found these chaps. And it was quite a hard test because I think there was only two people that actually came back and were able to do it. And there was these couple of young lads um, that were interested in working with us. And when we started a forward they, to, to look into it, they didn't just want to work, they wanted to set up a new business. Um, and that was quite interesting for me because we could support this, we could keep control, but we could learn and we can grow and tap in. And what did the one of the loveliest things of the last few years is working in with the different cultures. And I think that we, we are completely dominated by a very wide and varied culture within Amfigo yeah. of people and circumstances and knowledge and skills and different countries and mm. different aspects. Mm. And that's been quite an enjoyable process growing that. I think in the Amfigo team, there's probably 15 to 20 people out there just working on a project now those guys are also building <clears throat> other projects, other SaaS solutions, because yeah. we've taken all the skills and learning from there. Um, and that's set to grow and be a 20, 30, 40 per, um, person business wow. over the next couple of years as well. So I think that was quite pivotal. One, one, and one of the challenges that a lot of these companies, both in SaaS and, and, and the printing companies, is how do you scale this tech? And that's something that we can do and, yeah. and take on big projects. Yeah complete them at a very high technical skill level yeah. and deliver them back in a fairly fast paced um, one. So yeah, there was some some real pieces working with HP has been instrumental. Yeah. Um, they've been an incredible partner, haven't worked. Everybody says, why didn't you work with Xerox? You spent a long time there. For, for us, the entry level and finding the right customer or ICP as you like to call them, Chris, <laughs> um, <laughs> is ideal customer profile for those out there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> is they had that perfect customer, but also they were great, once again, culturally working with with, 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 with Israelis and, yeah. and working um, in, in, in America and, and, and things like that. We've learned a lot um, from, from those guys, but they've been a great partner. Yeah. We've worked very hard, but they've been a great partner. We've been very loyal to them in terms of what we've done and, and what we've worked um, from that perspective. And you mentioned HP. That's my leads on to mm. my final question. In Drupal, we we supported them with uh, an AI yeah. product. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts on AI, and where do you see it going? Um, well, that's. <laughs> I think if we look at it on on a couple of parts. So how will it infect? How will it infect? <laughs> Effect affect um, in Figo. Um, as a business, I think there's some great things that will. So I think it, and having spoke to one of the really big players, um, in 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 the business recently, um, it's just a, a phenomenon that will continue to grow. Yeah. Um, I was using it the other day to help a friend put together a pitch document and stuff like that. So I think as a business, it will give us a tool set to ex expedite and speed things up. Um, as an industry, um, I think it's still quite unknown of, of where it will go. I think there's, it's multifaceted and I'm fortunate I'm going to be sitting on and working with a panel um, in Label Expo in, in Chicago. But I think if we look at it from the front end, there's going to be um, some amazing um, options that allow people to get better information into the systems quicker, more accurate information will then be able to process and make better decisions. I think some of the challenges with uh, the workflow and MIS and on automation, so, so are they making the best decisions? So I think with AI, you'll be able to question and make better decisions and judgments. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also be some AI that will allow us to link these systems together mm. uh, much quicker. So I think... Um, Business-wise, I'm excited to see where... It, I don't think we're adopt, adopting it quick enough. Of course. Um, <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Um, but I think you have to be a little bit tentative with some of these things as an industry. I think we've just got to make sure that we don't jump on the bandwagon and do it for the do-it's sake. Make sure 
it adds value, it adds it adds benefit. Um, a bit like automation, why automate where you don't need to automate? Because mm-hmm. um, I think we can over-automate sometimes. So I think it's the same with AI. I think it's still, a lot of it's unknown, but there is definitely some benefits. So the printers and that looking at, at that at there, I would first look at how it helps them as a business, mm-hmm. as a business process first, get the benefits there. Then secondly, look at how they can use it to automate the the business and things like that. And I think if you look at it from a sales perspective, a marketing perspective, content generation perspective, yeah, yeah. all of that sort of stuff. But um, you've also just got to check in on it. I think it's, it's not the... Is not everything that everybody thinks it is right now, but it certainly will grow and become that over the over the next few years. Well, thank you for that free AI business strategy for anyone that's listening <laughs> today. So thank you as well for coming into your old office and yeah, hopefully we've looked after well, it. Well, it's part of the evolution, isn't it? You start, you grow, you develop. <laughs> I know I sit outside on a little park bench and, <laughs> and do my emails. <laughs> no, no, it's all part of, all part of the evolution. Thank you, Douglas. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for joining us today on The Print Pod. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and consider subscribing to make sure you get all the latest from the world of print and marketing. Feel free to share what you would like to see in the next episode of The Print Pod in the comments below. For more behind the scenes content, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels in the links in the bio below.